Hi, and welcome to OCR Radio. OCR Radio was started with the beginner in mind. We noticed that there were a lot of OCR dedicated websites and podcasts out there, but we didn't really find one that would take the beginner from step one to step 12, which is straight onto the course, and really equip them. We learned kind of the hard way. We fumbled our way through getting into obstacle course racing, and so we wanted to share our knowledge with you. So you might be wondering, who is we? We are Stephen and Stephanie. We also run theathlete.com. And some of you may have found us through that. We're going to do a little introduction of our background so you can see what we came from. We'll even tell you where we're trying to go. That didn't make any sense. Kind of did. Kind of did. Mm-hmm. We're trying to go into the woods. Oh. So let's go ahead and introduce our two hosts, for starting with Stephen. Thanks, Steph. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Sirocco, 38 years old from East Boston, Massachusetts. I'm a chief petty officer in the United States Coast Guard, been active duty for the past 13 years. Uh, Growing up in East Boston was uh, pretty rough, I'm not going to lie. We were on the lower economic rung of the ladder. Single mother, three kids. I'm the oldest of three. Athletic background in high school, I was a swimmer. I also played football for the East Boston High School Jets, Super Bowl champions, 1995. What? In 1996, I uh, first game of the season. On the kickoff, I uh, shattered my radius in Alna and uh, missed the entire season. Chicks so, dig scars. Yeah, that's what I'm told. So after graduating high school, um, I went to college. That didn't really work out. So while I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in life, I decided to become a cable guy. And while I was a cable guy, I got into weightlifting. And I was doing what everyone at the time in Boston was doing, was just uh, trying to be a meathead. Uh, That involved every kind of supplement you can imagine, Uh, a lot of metrics, a lot of uh, fat burners, and everything else that was just breaking in the market in the 90s, where uh, no FDA control and nobody knew what the hell they were ingesting in their bodies. Protein. Yeah, protein. Um, So God knows how much damage we've done to ourselves. Uh, Pretty much, it'll probably come out in the next uh, 10 to 15 years how much damage we did, but I guess we we looked the pot. Um, while I was a meathead, I was wearing Smedium t-shirts. I was going to the Roxy and downtown Boston with my buddy Ryan. So that was my, that was the extent of my, uh, athletic training at the time. Uh, after joining the Coast Guard, I got into running and, uh, body weight exercises and, uh, I was really receptive to everything new that came out. So I got into P90X, I got into insanity, circuit training. Then I was introduced to CrossFit about, uh, three years ago. So four years ago, and I'm not going to lie, at the time I loved it. Loved competing, learning new things. I did learn a lot from CrossFit. However, after two years, it was starting to to take a toll on my body. I wasn't really liking it anymore. I wanted to try something new. So my buddy, John Palekia, asked me to do an OCR race with him. I'm like, what's an OCR race? He's like, obstacle course racing. I'm like, dude, that's stupid. I'm not going to lie, I fell in love with it. I got on site and I was just overwhelmed by like the size of it. The cowbell in the background ringing, the smell of the, the mud and, and dirt and the people talking in the background. And you could just feel it the excitement in the air. Of um, It, it was going to be a great experience. It got me hooked. I remember finishing the race. It was only like three miles. But when I crossed the finish line, I was absolutely smoked. And I thought I was in shape at the time. And uh, from that point on, I, I haven't looked back. I got back and uh, I talked to Stephanie. And I was like, look, we got to do these races. They're absolutely amazing. And she's like, okay, because she'll try anything. She's right, Steph? I like to try stuff. Yeah, she'll try everything. (laughs) So, um, yeah, she fell in love with them as well. And uh, we're on number 34. 35. 35. Sorry, I'm a guy. I don't pay attention to details. (laughs) Yeah, so we've run 35 Spartan races. As far as my athletic training background goes, I am a coach at SK Fit Life Men. I also have my Spartan SGX certification. I am also a coach at The Athlete. CrossFit Level 1, CrossFit Olympic Weightlifting, CrossFit Kettlebell. I'm a certified personal trainer through WITS. And he's certified as a Spartan Obstacle Specialist. So a little bit about my background. I grew up out in the country, like middle of nowhere, uh, about an hour and a half outside of Kansas City. 
a little town called Butler. And um, I grew up with all brothers, boy cousins, just I was such a tomboy. And they like to remind me of all the silly things that we did. I spent most of my life like not wearing shoes and things like that. So as a kid, I, I really learned how to run down creek beds and climb over some fences and things like that. So fast forward just a little bit, high school, I moved to the suburbs. and You know, it's funny you say that. Growing up in inner city Boston, we didn't really have dirt and creek beds and things to run around. So what we did is when we got in trouble, we ran from the cops. We became really good at hopping fences and, and jumping roofs, which, uh, which translates well into Spartan races. So that's why I'm so good at, you know, climbing things, the rope climb and then uh, and uh, the walls and uh, the hurdles. So that's what I did as a kid while I was running from the cops. From the cops? Huh? From the cops, yeah. I wasn't exactly the, the, the best kid growing up. But I was raised well, and I got in just enough trouble to uh, to allow me to join the Coast Guard I was and, say, and, Coast and still Guard be here you. and talk with you. And it did. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that tidbit. Huh. I get it. And so if you've seen pictures of Stephen, he's 5'10 and about 210 pounds. So he's, he's uh, very muscular and... and that's kind of tough when you're climbing stuff. So, um, yeah. So that's why I guess I'm part Billy Goat and he is part, I don't know. I'm a meathead that's mobile. I'm a mobile meathead. Mobile meathead. Mobile meathead. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to describe myself. You, you're I can awesome. move for a bigger guy, which yeah. I'll, I'll take. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so fast forward just a little bit into high school. Um, yeah, like he said, I like to try lots of stuff. I will try anything. Um, I did cross country, track and field, water polo, swimming. Um, yeah, that was, and then I ran even more. Um, I was a thrower in high school too. So I did all kinds of stuff. And then into college, I did a lot of those same sports. Um, and then I also became a lifeguard. And so I was doing that and doing triathlons and duathlons. So from there, I joined the Navy. I was a nuclear engineer in the U.S. Navy. For six years. Uh, During that time, still loving the endurance stuff. As soon as I got out of the Navy, I kind of switched gears a bit. Um, I became a defense contractor working an office job. So I know what it's like to have a horrendous commute and work long hours and still try to get your workouts in. And I also switched up my training and started doing fitness competitions. So kind of like bodybuilding, just not as lean or quite as muscular, a little more pageanty. So I had to work my workouts schedule around that. Um, And then eventually I launched my own lifestyle fitness business online in 2012. So I got rid of that commute, but still had to figure out now how to get my workout in between all of the hours an entrepreneur works, which, you know, when you set your own schedule, it's cool because you can work whichever like 12 or 14 hours a day you choose. (laughs) So I started doing that. um, And then that kind of became my sport was work. Um, I still continued to do some workouts, but I didn't have a specific goal in mind, really just maintenance and some lifestyle stuff. And if you tried that, it's boring. So Stephen and I had been dating and he came back from this muddy race and said, Hey, let's do this. So I said, sure. So, um, our very first, my very first race, our very first race together was the 2014 winter green race for Spartan. Actually, I had done a Tough Mudder a year before that, but it was flat in Florida, and it was uh, it was a walk in the park compared to the Winter Green Spartan Race. So I show up, and I think I'm ready. No, you were very well prepared. Um, what did you wear for sneakers? Yeah, that's why we created this podcast series. I showed up in regular running shoes. Regular running shoes with no tread on a mountain in Virginia in the rain muddy yeah right i was gonna die if you didn't buy me shoes yes so what happened was i looked at my beautiful girlfriend and i saw what she was wearing i'm like nah we we can't do this so if you haven't been to a spot in races they have booths set up and at these booths they have uh, socks and sneakers and gear and anything and everything Spartan. So I ended up buying her a pair of Reebok uh, running shoes. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Spartan trail running shoes. And uh, how'd that work out? Wow. 
I think that if he wouldn't have purchased those for me, I don't think we'd be talking today because that is how much of a difference the proper shoes make. Yeah, if you have run a Spartan race, I'm pretty sure you've seen people on the course that, like Stephanie, wasn't really aware of what to expect. And they're trying to climb up a mountain and then they're just sliding up, sliding back, not making any forward progress. Yeah. So he hooked me up with some nice shoes and we did the race and it kicked my ass like hardcore. I didn't even know what had happened to me. Um, I could barely move my body by the end. Everything was cramping. We cover that in our series too. And so I said, well, when is the next one? Because that's the logical thing to do once you get your ass kicked, right? So yeah, like he said, we are coming up on our 35th um, race. And or we've completed 35 between the two of us. And yeah, we are dedicated to bringing you lessons that you want to know about. And we're not talking about just shave a minute off of my 10 mile race time or anything like that. Like we want to bring something that is to get that beginner going. And we know that not everybody has a fitness background. And that's what's so great about these races is that you don't have to have a fitness background. You can plan your strengths wherever they may lie. They may lie in running. They may be in climbing. They may just be your mental toughness to not quit. So we hope you enjoy this series as much as we enjoy putting it together. And if you have any questions or recommended guests, please email us at podcast at ocrradio.com. Take care, everyone. And hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. OCR Radio. Get out, get dirty, get living.